Don't call her cute. Don't call her feisty. She's a rebel. She is nasty. She is brave. She is a honey sweetie sugar pie baby. And don't you ever say that she was well behaved. Don't you ever say that she was well behaved. And don't you ever say that she was well behaved. Yeah. I did the math. Did I tell you that? Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I posted it on our the Facebook page and Twitter. But I count. I like divided. <laughs> I added and divided. And we did you count Maria too? Or just no, Mary? just Mary mm. specifically. But if and it's we have a Mary on this podcast every five point four two episodes. That's really funny. Less after this, probably. Yeah, Unless I don't have persons. a Mary. No, me neither. She's Changing it up. Wow. Um, I went to Atlantic City last night. Oh, yeah. For, I saw that on your social media. <laughs> and I got home at 3 a.m. <clears throat> because That's I forgot a, about the time change. Yeah, the time change. I know. Um, but that was my first time inside of a real casino. Because oh, before really? that, I had really only... Like, I had been to, like, a couple in New Orleans. but Or, like, one in Baton Rouge that was real sad. Yeah. Where I... Uh, like, another place where I bombed <laughs> for a while. That was, like... I remember that show. Joe Cardosi came with me. Because for some reason, I didn't have a car. And he had to drive me. Um, and then afterwards, we went to the station open mic. <laughs> it was just a bad night. Uh, wow. I remember they were, like, do 15 minutes. And at the time, that was all I had. And I got on stage and like nobody was laughing at anything (laughs) anything and so I just like went through all of my jokes really fast and realized by the time I got to the end I had done 10 minutes because without laughter or pauses that's how long it is I just said like okay (laughs) I remember at one point I had because it's like I had a line about like you know, I talked about being Jewish or whatever. And most of the people in the audience were black. And I said something of like, I bet you're thinking like, this girl needs Jesus. And there was like a collective, mm-hmm. I was like, oh no. Oh God. <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> That's awful. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh my God. What this casino was this more was exciting than that. than that. Yeah, it was like, it looked like. Is it like a, a comedy club in a casino or yeah. do you perform in like it's a little a, theater? No, it's a comedy club in the casino oh. that turns into a nightclub right afterwards. Oh. And so, but which was like, create, there are like stripper poles on the bar. The wow. stage is like very short. I thought I was going to fall off a couple. I almost fell off the stairs on my way down. Um, but then behind you are like 50 TV screens of like somebody, of like mouth, of like somebody's mouth with like weird popping like things in and out of her mouth and like different lipsticks while you're doing stand-up while you're doing stand-up um that's weird and is it booked through new york comedy club is that what yeah um but like as far as the casino show goes like it was pretty good and like they're full and i won't say anything bad about it because i want to do it again (laughs) and sounds great um and then like the I went down with like three other comics and that's just like the best. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just, Who would like, you go to with? I went with Shuli something, I forget his last name. Um, but he like he works with for the Howard Stern show and has been doing comedy for like fifteen years, twenty years, and so it just like oh. has all these stories, which is always fun. Wow. And then Eagle Wit and Alex Pavone. Cool. I don't really know any car. of them. It was a good car. That's it was fun. Cool. Did you drive? I drove. Is your car good? Wasn't your car I not mean, good for a minute? It's like fine. <laughs> <laughs> I took it to the mechanic because my check engine light, it had been on, like it's kind of yeah. always on, but it started blinking. Wasn't and I was there like, something oh. like really bad with it several months ago where it was like not st- or something? But yeah, fix that. something happened. Like there was one day where it just wouldn't start for yeah. some reason, but that only happened that one time. Okay. Um, but I took my car this last time because I needed an oil change anyway. But I was like, also with the check engine light is blinking. Mm-hmm. And so he like changed my oil. And then he was like, so when I ran the scan, there were so many codes that came up that mm-hmm. I have no clue what it could be. So I'm just going to reset it when it comes back on, bring it back to me. And so oh. it just came back on. So I have to bring it back. Oh, to okay. him. But it's not like doing anything weird. Cool. So I'll take it back. Mom, I'm going to take it back. I promise. I'm going to take it to the mechanic. I swear. It'll be fine. It's going to be so fine. 
Um, that's exciting. I kind of want to time it with when alternate side parking is so I don't have to deal with it for a couple of days. That's smart. Yeah. That's really smart. You should do that. Um, yeah, we have, we have the car, I guess Louis has to move it today, but he's going to go take the laundry in. We have so much laundry. Ugh, it pile, when we, when we do it together, it just piles up so fast. It's very mm-hmm. stressful to me and I like never have time to go do it. I don't know why. Oh, well, anyway. This is boring. <laughs> you look so nice, though. Why are you dressed up so nice? I don't know. I just figured we would go to rehearsal after this, and then maybe I would go to, like, a micro show. I will try and stay out, you know? Mm-hmm. Just Ugh. try and, like, not go back home until the nighttime. Yeah. No, I have to go back home. I'm so tired. Oh, yeah. you. Yeah. We stayed up very late, but we slept in. So I, I, slept, I slept eight hours, which is That's nice. what I needed. I didn't go to sleep until, like, four because I got we home went to at three, sleep at five, which was very stupid. That's very late. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Well, we went out. Da- we went. Well, I went with Mara Wiles and Kevin O'Brien from Denver, who live here now. Very funny comics. And Mara lis- listens to the podcast. Shout out. Um, and they they knew of this like soul uh, DJ group that like <laughs> that DJs in Denver that was in town, and so at the Knitting Factory with Fred Schneider of the B52s who is the guy who's like the the very gay male voice in, in like the like the song Love Shack. You know, he's like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. down yeah. to the cut up <laughs> That guy was there. What's he like? He's like very he's like and they're going into town and then they go in the car and I find a frog <laughs> and I eat a bog. It's like that. That's him. We Googled Love the, Shack <laughs> is a little place where we Googled the B fifty twos and his Wikipedia description is cowbell player poet and vocalist fred schneider in that order <laughs> yes. um, so anyway but he was there and so it was just like soul music and stuff i went with there was like a bunch of comics and louis had a spot at gotham and met me late and it kind of like wound down which was like weird and sad like i guess they just didn't i don't know they like it was really good music but like people just kind of like left early maybe they mm. were scared off by the time change or something but at a certain mm. point you could see fred schneider like his face being like why what am i doing here uh, but then once it got to be like literally because then all, the other comics left and like louis got there and louis was like i want to stay for a little bit because i just got here and i was like okay and it's right by our house so he's we stayed for a little bit longer and there was a point where there was literally four it was us and an, and two women on the dance floor um and fred schneider came down and was like dancing around with us and that was cool That's so fun. there was like a moment where he just was like what Ever. and then just like, yes. came and danced um so that was cool and um yeah and then we came home and louis was like i have to show you b52 videos so we spent <laughs> then like and then we went from b52 videos to other like talking songs so then we watched a bunch of rem videos and then we watched a bunch of u2 videos and i was just like louis i, well, I don't like this anymore <laughs> we went deep diving into youtube like listening to shitty music <laughs> yes no, this of it was good, but we listened to like <laughs> we just didn't start out, the like, fire. <laughs> That's what That's happened. That's not what happened. He, he kept says. diving. He kept diving. I love and I that was, though. Like, when you just go it's into five like, in the morning, you yeah. have to go to bed now. I love going into like a YouTube rabbit hole. Yeah, I'm That's just exactly like, what it was. ooh, what's this? That's exactly Ooh, what's what this? Is. That's that's what he was doing. But I was like, it's it's the time change has now made it four thirty five <laughs> o'clock. We need to go to bed. Um, so it's okay though. It was funny, and. Yeah, and then like we, I just we woke up at like noon. So. That's nice. Yeah. I know I set my alarm because I normally when we do this, like when we record this podcast, I have to wake up early that morning to like finish. I know I had done mine already. I thankfully. had done mine last night at the club, like between oh, the shows. Smart. And That's I forgot productive. that I had done it. Oh my god! And so I, I like set my alarm, <laughs> and then I woke up and I was like, oh no, I can keep sleeping. Yay. But Bamford was like, no, you can't. Oh, Take me out. <laughs> she was very good though because I left her alone for way too long yesterday mm. i forgot that there were two shows i thought it was just one oh, no. last night and i didn't realize until we got in the car because at first i was like man i'm getting paid well for this and then i was like oh, no. oh. <laughs> it's so for two like, shows so, you like, so she was there from like what six or something she was home alone for a while wow. yeah from like f- i guess from like 3 p.m Eek. until 3 a.m which is i mean like she sleeps and we like spent a lot of time outside yesterday and so like running around like, so yeah. she was fine no. but i got home last night and like, like i gotta pee i had to take <laughs> her out yeah she was very good about it though she went in a block like peed and pooped and then we she was like okay we can go back home yeah. i was like oh thank god thank you so much <laughs> yeah i'm not trying to like take a long walk at three in the morning yeah ugh, thank god which like i would do for her 
mm-hmm. but I prefer not to, yeah. especially since it's still cold. Yeah. And that's not that safe, is it, to be walking around? I mean, I it's my her. neighborhood. Also, it's like very well lit that's and true. there's still people out. Yeah. Like it's not On desolate. your block, it's like there's a lot of businesses and stuff. Yeah. I wouldn't go like, on like the side streets. I wouldn't go down any side street, yeah. but... Like I mean, I, she's, she would protect you, I think. I really think she would. Yeah. One time, I, this is a couple of years ago, but we were walking at night. And this is when I lived in like not such a nice neighborhood. Um, in Bushwick. In, this is yeah. in Bushwick, yeah. And I, I don't know if this guy like, you know, had any bad intentions. But like some guy kind of like snuck up behind me. Like he was just like walking very close at like out of nowhere. Mm. And Bamford turned around and like leapt at him. Or leaped at him. Yeah. Whatever the past tense of leap. And like, I think. And like snarled in a way that she never does. And he like, he was like, oh, and like kind of backed up. And he was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Where like she never, she's she like, so friendly to everybody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was like, mm-hmm. I think if that's good to know. Yeah, it's very good to know. Um, She'll protect me from men who mean harm and the rain. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, she, if only she could protect you from the rain. Anytime it rains, she's like, just so you know, it's about to rain. Kiss <laughs> the <laughs> rain. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Julie came over oh, two nights fun. ago and spent the night because Shaggy's out of town. Oh man, Shaggy's always out of town he's now. Still, he's been out of town for like wow, a couple long weeks. Long term, long distance. I know. Where is he now? He's still in LA. Oh, oh, he's in LA. Oh, wasn't he like in Michigan he or was something? He's in Minneapolis and then oh, LA. They fl- okay, okay. So Julie came over and we did my favorite thing, which is floor bed, which is where you take all of the blankets and pillows and put them on the floor and make a bed out of it. <laughs> On the ground and in I, the living room. In, in the your living bedroom. room, yeah. I love it so much. It's like what I do when I'm sick. Wow. You know, make floor bed. Floor bed. That is a w- unique tradition. I've never done I floor love bed. It. Um, it just like feels. It, it feels like, like a slumber Louis's party. True nightmare because of the germs. <laughs> he doesn't let anything touch the floor. Um, but we no. So I've never done or the floor bed. bed. <laughs> no, or the bed. That's true. Um. That sounds so fun, though. You did yeah. floor bed and just hung out. We did floor bed and hung out, and I have Watched two adult TV. coloring books and Ooh. so many gel pens that I just got off those, of Amazon. I know. I, I'm so. Those are very intriguing. Those gel pens. Yeah, it was great. So we did that. That's fun. And then before that, for International Women's Day, when I texted you, oh yeah, to come hang out. I was at this party this like women's party it was a fundraiser for girls who code oh cool which was great but they had like performances also and so there was like burlesque and a couple of musicians and then me where was it it was at freehold in williamsburg okay which was like i mean the venue is gorgeous it's really nice Everybody there was like so cool and hip. Oh my god, how fun! It was so Williamsburg, and I walked in and I was like, I don't belong here. No, Um, and so I mean, everybody's just like, like Williamsburg beautiful. You know what I mean? Like has like a a unique style. Yes, and so I texted Julie and I was like, please come here, (laughs) please be with me, (laughs) because there are also like weren't any other comedians to hang out. Yeah, yeah, you're just literally alone, just there. And then I texted you too, and they gave you a plus one or whatever, like to. Yeah, I mean it was free to get in. It was just like donations donations. at the door. Okay, Okay. Um, but they like gave us free alcohol and food in oh, the, cool. for, if, for performing and so nice. I was like Julie <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. get over here and it's then I gave food. her a ride home that's nice so that was how was the set it was good it was like um it was really interesting it's hard when it's like other types of performance too because they're yeah. not like quite in the mood and like the burlesque was great there was like this one performer her, she was she, I guess she has cerebral palsy mm-hmm. and she goes by cerebral pussy she does burlesque <laughs> and it was like so funny but I feel like the audience it seemed like they had never hear they didn't know what to do while watching burlesque because mm. you're supposed to like Woo, whoop and holler yeah. and like whistle and stuff and I feel like they were just like silently watching. Yeah, they're like cool <laughs> Williamsburg people who never show their emotions. Yeah. Um and That's funny. Then but then so she went up and I I like I loved it. And she does this she like it was just like great or whatever. And then there was a girl who rapped, her name was Schizo. <laughs> and she also we were talking backstage and she was like 
I asked her what her day job was and she's like, oh, I'm a construction worker. And I was like, that's so cool. What? I love seeing women a do construction. construction worker? That's yeah. amazing. So she was like, I go from one male dominated industry <clears throat> to the next. Oh my God. Um, and then my set was good. It like took a second to get them to listen. Yeah, that's, I, that's what I imagine because it's like with the other stuff, you can kind of chat while you watch it. Right. And in comedy, you can't do that. But they, they like, once they realized what was happening, they were all they were so it. good and on cool. board. There was one... Like there was a couple in the second row who were talking the whole time. Oh my God. But it's, I felt like I couldn't be mean to them because it was such a like women solidarity. (laughs) You'd be like, bitch. I know. I wanted to be like, he's not going to fuck you. Like just stop or just be, or be like, just go fuck already. Like stop talking here and flirting. Girls who go more like girls who drone on and on. Uh, Get out of here. Well, and it was him too. I mean, he was part of the, where I was a dude. It was a guy and a girl. You should have yelled at the guy. I should have, but I mean, she was doing more of the talking. It was, it was awkward. It it, it was, they were, and also, he actually seemed like he was like trying to watch the show. Oh, and she was like, she was like chatty. Oh, God. Uh, um, And then one of the barbacks came in to like, I guess he was just like busing, whatever, just to the green room where Mm -hmm. we were at. That's fine. And he said something like, he was like, you're, he said something like, um, you're beautiful girls. <laughs> and we all like looked at him and Ew. gave him this look and he realized, I guess he, he was like, Oh, okay. Anything. <laughs> and then walked out and I was like, not today, mister. <laughs> not today. It's International women's day. It's our day. That's really funny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I know but this it was week, really what fun. else did I do this? I went to the yeah, I went to Handmaid's Tale. That was very good. Handmaid's Tale the musical. Handmaid's Tale the musical. Are they going to do it again? I know she's done it a few times. She, now, they were saying that this was their last time for a while, but then when I was there, I was like, "You guys going to do this again?" She was like, "Yeah, probably." I mean, I think they just don't have one like on the books yeah. now, but I imagine they will. It, I, I mean, if they sold see. out the Bell House. You know, it's a huge venue, yeah. so they could they should do it again. I it's mean, such a fun idea. It's really funny. It's really good. I liked it. Um, and then what did I even do Friday? I don't remember. Oh, I just, it's Friday. You know, I've noticed lately that like Fridays, I'm very tired, which sure, is like very like nine to five you. of me. But yeah, I tend to like need to, if I have a show, I'll do it. But otherwise, or maybe I'll do like an early mic or whatever. But otherwise I need to, I can't really like go mm-hmm. out. So I didn't do much on Friday. And then, yeah, yesterday was, was this craziness. This Fred Schneider <sighs> business. That was pretty exciting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I'm hungover, mm. even though like these you weren't really drunk. These babe lips didn't touch a drop last oh, yeah, night because I drove. <laughs> but I feel you're probably just. I, I mean, you're exhausted. Not, yeah. What time did you wake up? Um. Well, I like woke up intermittently because I thought I had to get up early yeah. to do work that I had already done. Mm. But like officially got up at like I mean eleven thirty, but and still I was really I started enough. waking up at like nine thirty. That's not really enough. Which yeah. is really eight thirty if you Yeah. Too ugh, much. So too dumb. Much. So dumb. I'm so also sorry. since Shaki's out of town, the hu- nobody's running the humidifier because I I mean, I could probably figure out how, but I don't want to. And so I think it's just drier in my apartment than usual. That's true. I know. I need to get back on our humidifier game. I was using it when Louis was out of town, but then since he's been here, I haven't like tried it. How come? I don't know. I think he's going to hate it. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because it's like kind of noisy. Jews love humidifiers. They do? Yeah. We love moisture in the air. All right. He, he gave me a yes <laughs> point. All right. I'll put it on tonight. I'll put it on tonight. It's also like on his side of the bed. Like I put it kind of, it's like in the way of him. Well, like when he wasn't in town, I just like would put it in his walkway. Now, so I kind of need to figure out another place to uh-huh. put it. That's the other thing. A real home A place for that's it. not like in his way to the bed. Right. You know. So, Yeah. Well, this is well behaved. It's a podcast about women in history who, you know, maybe you just haven't heard of them because they're obscure and no one's talking. But we are. We are. We're chatting. We're chatting. We're podcasting. We're learning. Ooh, we're growing as people and as uh, as souls. Yeah, we're going yeah. as people and as souls. There's church going on across the street, and there's church going on in here. Wow, our I church, know the church is, is women. a little quieter today. A little bit. You hear it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can't hear it in the headphones. Oh, good. Oh, good. That's okay. good. Um, yeah. We're learning about women in history. <laughs> <laughs> Love chat podcast is a little place where you we can get some knowledge. 
<laughs> uh, okay. That's Molly Rubin Long. Uh, that's Ariel Elias. And we are Girls with Mace. Yeah. No, that was our, yeah. uh, that was Molly our and I tour toured. name. We went Pretty by Girls hot with name. Mace. Oh, last night I, at an open mic, I did a joke. Oh, a joke that I'm working on about like period stuff. And I had a phrase that I used and, and uh, Jeffrey Asmus, very funny comic from Chicago, was like, you should make that, you should make that merch. <laughs> and so <laughs> he gave me a merch idea and I was like, yeah, yeah I should make that merch. Uh, that last exciting. night I was just, after last, I was like, yeah, I want to like just be on the road. I just want to get in a car and drive to shows oh, no, with somebody in my car. I, I got really real, do I that. got like very itchy for it. Oh God, I've been wanting to do that for so long. I haven't done it in a while. Ugh. Well, okay. I let's think do it first. Do it. I um, believe you. And I want to find who recommended this person to me because I put out a, th- a little thready thread on I saw that. Facebook. Um, you got so many suggestiones in there. I know. Well, s- I read a thing about like how to hack the Facebook algorithm, and it's basically like now that they're um, prioritizing like people to people communication if you ask a question on facebook it puts it at the top of people's timelines really? because cool. yeah and so like the more comments you get obviously like the more it oh my god pushes so it funny. up as opposed to like c- like keywords wait well, do you think be. it's because it's is it do they put it at the top because it's a question or do they put it at the top because more people have responded and both. more people responded because it's a question oh, okay both, both. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, this came from uh, Linnea. Linnea. Sorry, I can't remember. Who is that? Linnea. Uh, she is a comedian slash model slash actor who I met. I met her just like last week, I guess. Oh, we did that show together in Jersey last Jersey. week. Damn, you're doing so much road work. Yeah, I'm going to Jersey again this week. I gotta stop going to Jersey. Okay. Um, <laughs> but so she suggested this person. I'm cool. very excited. So cool. this is um, Loretta Janetta Velasquez. Ooh. Um, sh- Loretta was born. Okay, and there are two versions of this story. And I'll get, I'll tell like the one that I like first. Wow. And then I'll tell the version of like the man who says nay. But okay. Okay, so she was born June 26, 1842 in Havana, Cuba. Mm. Um, Her dad was this, like, wealthy plantation owner. He owned, like, a bunch of plantations or whatever. And then at some point, I guess there was some policy that the U.S. imposed that, like, between, like, the Mexican-American War that caused him to lose one of his farms. Mm. And so suddenly he had a vendetta against the U.S. where he was just like, fuck them. Like, I'm still very wealthy, but, like you know, this was my favorite farm or whatever. And so he um, is just like the United States, like, grr. And so then he sends Loretta to go to boarding school in New Orleans oh. um, to live with her aunt because Havana and New Orleans are sister cities. Yes. A lot of, a lot of mutual trade and stuff and culture. So Loretta's in boarding school and then she uh, gets engaged very young to Mm -hmm. this guy named Raphael and then I don't know what happens to Raphael but she ends up eloping when she's 14 to the with this guy named William Mm -hmm. um and William was a soldier uh for like the U.S. and then a year I guess it's like a year later the civil war breaks out Mm -hmm. and he chooses to fight with the confederacy and Mm. she's like loretta's like fuck yeah because fuck the union like they took my dad's one one of many farms Mm. um yeah yeah it's not you know it's not ideal nobody's perfect (laughs) yeah well loretta is far from perfect but she's real ballsy um so loretta decides that like she also really wants to fight like she wants to be a soldier and Mm -hmm. she's just like saucy or whatever and William is like no you can't be a soldier like you're a woman or whatever but she keeps like (laughs) poking at him she said she wrote uh, her memoirs and in it she said which is where like most of this information comes Mm. from she said uh, quote I desired if possible to obtain my husband's consent but he would not listen to anything I had to say on the subject and all I could do was wait his departure for the seat of war in order to put my plans into execution without his knowledge (laughs) as I felt that it would be useless to argue with him although I was obstinately bent upon realizing the dream of my life whether he approved of my course or not 
Yeah, honestly, the key to a good marriage is just like lying. <laughs> just wait for him to go out of town. Yeah, just leave and then do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just wait for him to go out of town. And as you know, bed. with Jackie, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know this one's like, I'm going to war. And I'm like, I'm going to eat snacks in the cubby. <laughs> and I'm like, floor bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I'm going to have street clothes on the bed. Uh, <laughs> just kidding, Lou. <laughs> yeah. I'm not wiping off Bamford's paws every time she comes in from outside. <laughs> I will change the sheets before he gets home, though. Um, And so finally, William is like, "Okay, you want to go to war so badly. Like you think you want to be a soldier like you think, you know, but you have no idea. So he then is like, I'll show you how much you don't actually want to do this. Like it's just the idea in your Mm -hmm. head that you love. So he helps her disguise herself as a male soldier and takes her to like the saloon with all of the other soldiers and he's mm-hmm. thinking like she's gonna see how vulgar and crass <laughs> they are and she's gonna hate it yeah but of course she loved it loved it yeah she's just like yes this is these are my like, people exactly. love it <laughs> i she's know like, what i want he's like yeah. no you don't because also like, yes, i think I this do. is a time where like women weren't allowed in the in every pub in saloons, you know like in the yeah. saloons this is in new orleans she's this is in new orleans mm-hmm. yeah so maybe she was allowed to go wherever but maybe not though i don't know i don't know yeah i didn't do that much research that's literally fine <laughs> you did, everything's fine you know what as we always say this is a jumping off point yeah yeah, yeah. This if is you your want more information fucking go somewhere go else to the internet <laughs> <laughs> well, you, then, yeah, you just have a fun tidbit this is for party tidbits as yes, only fun facts much. fun facts Fun facts and laughs. Um, So she's just like, this is for sure what I'm going to do. And William says, no, like, I forbid you or whatever. But then Mm -hmm. he goes off to battle. Bye, bitch. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And so while he's gone, Loretta's like, this is my fucking chance. She cuts off her hair. She, like, goes to the tailor, gets a couple of of suit of soldier uniforms. (laughs) Uniforms. Soldier clothes. Soldier clothes. (laughs) She gets a soldier suit. (laughs) And, um... Then she goes to Arkansas and recruits 236 men in mm. four days wow. to fight for her. And she goes by the name Lieutenant Henry T. Buford. <laughs> just like, <laughs> I love it. It's just like Amazing. the whitest male name. So she like. Uh, so she gets these guys because I guess that's like what they because, you know, like the Confederacy, the Confederate army was like a, it was literally like the rebel army. There wasn't yeah. like an organization of like you come up through the ranks and blah, blah, blah. It was just like, no, you find guys on a farm who will fight for you. Um, so then she after she does this, she goes to Florida to find her husband mm-hmm. um, and he like doesn't recognize her. And then because she's still, you know, whatever. And she's like, hey, baby, (laughs) it's me. (laughs) Um, And he's like, what are you doing? And she's like, here, I brought you this. And it's like the role of all of the men that she had recruited. And she's like, so, yeah, I'm going to fucking fight, bitch. (laughs) And then he's like, we'll talk about this when I get home. Um, So she goes back to New Orleans and before he can, I guess it was just like, we don't know his reaction because then he died. Um, <laughs> and the way he died oh. was he was doing some like weapons demonstration to his soldiers and like whatever explosive was in his hand exploded and he died. There's a demonstration of how not to use this. Yeah, basically. It's like, oh, a, did you ever read the Darwin Awards? Did no. you read those books? I feel like that, maybe that's not up your alley because it's all the... That? It's um, a compilation of stories of people who died in dumb ways. Oh, that's funny. I don't know that I would like read it, but I'd love someone to just like tell me about some of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? (laughs) Yes. Well, here we go. Okay, good. Um, There's, I mean, we got really into this in eighth grade. We were like, we would pass around because they do it every year or whatever. um, Um, But one of them was like a guy showing off like the, his office buildings, like a shatterproof glass. Oh no. And he just like banged on it. And then, Oh no. Um, that's terrible. (laughs) Yeah. Terrible. Definitely not funny. Um, okay. So, Oh my God. So then, uh, Loretta goes and fights in the battle of bull. She turns over her, her men to like some other Lieutenant. It's mm-hmm. like, here, I recruited these guys for you. You take them mm-hmm. and like trained them and shit. Um, so she then fights in the battle of bull run and balls bluff. 
<laughs> oh man, that's what I call my sex life. Balls bluff. <laughs> Just bluffing balls left and right. Um, and then after that, she's like, okay, that was cool. Um, but then she dresses as a woman again mm. and goes to DC to spy and get info for the Confederacy. Chill, 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 chill. chill. Yeah, she's not on the right side of things at all, but, right. you know. But she's still got a cool spirit. She's got a great story, <laughs> but we know that she's wrong. Yeah. Um, for, you know, which side she chose. <laughs> Excuse me. Ooh. Um, that's for the Confederacy. Yeah. Fuck you guys, you lost. I um, like that a lot of a podcast is just burp dedications. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like it's like, you know, kind of our thing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know. If I should just start farting on command. Yes, uh, can you? No, certainly not. We had a family friend who could fart on command. Wow. That's... And now she's a mother of two. Honestly, she she farted out two babies. <laughs> she did. On command. <laughs> Probably on command. Um. So like babies come out of butts, right? Yes. Babies <laughs> okay, cool, come out of cool, butts. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> um, and oddly enough, poop comes out of your vagina. Wow. Um, so Yum. to all the men listening for their like information, <laughs> now you know. Now you, it's like the, the more you know star comes across mm-hmm, your head. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> so then she's like doing that for a while. She's a spy. And then Loretta goes back to the South uh, as Henry, as Henry T. Buford, mm-hmm. and fights. <laughs> Honestly, I love she was like, all right, I'm going to cosplay a Confederate soldier. Let me get the goofiest Confederate oh name. Henry T. Buford. The photo, too. Of, I mean, I guess it's not a photo, but like the illustration, it has a side by side of her as a woman and her as Henry. And it's so, I mean, it looks like it reminds me of three kids in a trench coat who like not that it looks totally fake but it's just like the must the facial hair that she put very exaggerated so it's just like it's such like your idea of a man you know what i mean as opposed to what a real whatever so um so she goes back and fights in the siege of fort donaldson and Mm -hmm. this is in 1862 um during the siege her foot is wounded and she's just like shit i can't have anybody find out that i'm a woman and so with her injured foot goes back to new orleans Mm. so that they you know they won't find out that she's a she so yeah she can just pick i'm home and my foot i hurt my foot (laughs) yeah basically she can just like go to which is also so crazy like i don't know how she got back to new orleans where was she in tennessee i don't know it's the siege of fort donaldson i don't know where that is again but still any having to travel anywhere would be a lot yeah especially in 1862 yeah that doesn't seem good so when she's in new orleans um and she's I don't know why she was still dressed as Henry. Maybe she was just like into it or whatever. Mm -hmm. But she gets arrested while she's in New Orleans under suspicions of being a spy for the Union. Wow. And she's like, no, 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 no. I'm a spy for the Confederacy. (laughs) Like, I'm on, you know. And I don't know which, who was occupying New Orleans at this point, but somebody was. Um, And so then they drop the charges Mm -hmm. for being a spy and they just charge her for impersonating a man, which is just like a fine or whatever. I'm sure. I feel like this was probably (laughs) happening a lot back then. Yeah. Um, And then she, okay, so then Loretta pays her fine, whatever. And then she goes to Tennessee as Henry and runs into the 236 men who she had recruited and and trained and is like, oh "Oh my God, hey guys, like what's (laughs) up? Um, and then joins them because mm. she's like, you know, we've got a rapport. We'll yeah. just keep this going. Um, and they she's fight. like, so much for that fine I just paid. I'm going to just go back to doing what I was doing anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah. Loretta at no give point learns <laughs> any lessons. She does not give any fucks. Doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Um, she's truly just like, I'm going to do whatever I want to do. Um, and then she fights in the Battle of Shiloh, which. Oh, that one I've heard of. I feel yeah. Like. I think that was like a very deadly yeah battle and like very like one of the worst ones mm. i think <laughs> from what i can like, recall from seventh bad, grade history. So like, whatever <laughs> yeah um but you know it was the battle of brothers mm. Mm. sisters sounds like sisters though yeah they siblings. didn't even know um okay so then after the battle of shiloh she's on burial duty because somebody you know i'm sure they rotated but like Yee. somebody has to bury the dead soldiers um, yeah. And a like a discarded shell, like an unexploded shell, ex- 
explodes um and it wounds her in her side oh no and so this time she can't go back to new orleans like she's too wounded and the doctor is like like checking her out or whatever and discovers that she's a woman yeah he's like you know what's this tit (laughs) (laughs) um What's this? T- <laughs> and so, oh, it's just a Confederate soldier. Ma, ma, ma. What's this tip? <laughs> um, and so she, Loretta then goes back to New Orleans before I guess like charges can be brought up or whatever. That I mean, this is part of why like I think. So this is all like according to her memoir. Yeah, and I get why like some of this is like probably not true because it's like. Oh, you had like a wounded or... side and then you just like went. I don't know. It's like I, people were like dying of gangrene and shit. Like I and like getting shit amputated. Yeah. All the although time. maybe when they realized she was a woman, they were like mad at her. But they the doctor was going to be like, like treating her better maybe because they were I like, oh, well, you're, you're fragile. Maybe. But you're in trouble. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't really know. But so. Tits. Yeah. <laughs> My my goodness, you've got wait, you've got like an, a misformed penis in the shape of a vagina. <laughs> I've never seen such an injury. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so then she goes back to New Orleans and recovers, and then she keeps traveling the country as a spy. So she's like back in ladies' clothing, just going around gathering information. She marries some other guy who almost immediately dies. Mm-hmm. And then the war ends and Loretta joins her brother to like travel in South America, mm-hmm. which honestly is like my dream to do with my brother. I would love to do that. <laughs> um, Adam, let's go on a trip. So she, Loretta like meets some guy while she's in South America. She marries him. They move to Venezuela and he dies. Um, so then they, she goes back to the United States. She gives birth to a baby boy in Salt Lake City. Supposedly, she met Brigham Young, um, mm. which, like, who knows? And who cares? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then in 1876, she publishes her memoir because I. Th- she said, like, you know, she needed money to, like, care for her son or whatever. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, that's that for, one's for having kids. No. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> um, although, did you see there's um, you can volunteer to like cuddle babies in the hospital who are what? like babies who are born addicted to drugs, oh, like need extra care and you can go there's like I meant to look. I, I didn't do that. Yeah, I kind of do, too. I was like, maybe this will like fulfill I would do that, that desire for sure. and you can just like go and hold them oh my for a God. while and I would totally do that so guys look at that program in your in your home <laughs> um so yeah and then she like like nothing else is really known about her supposedly some old guy proposes to her and she's like nah I've already been married like three times I'm mm-hmm. good and they keep dying and you're gonna die so no thank you <laughs> um and then by all I think so nobody like knows what happened to her afterwards mm-hmm. and they think she died in 1923. Um, but like, again, who knows? Weird. So the flip side of this is there's this historian named something. Cool. Cool. cool, cool. A man. Mm. So I didn't bother. Yeah. Um, no, I'm just kidding. His last name is Davis. Um, and I'll, when I read my sources, I'll remember. But he basically says that all of that was bullshit. Mm, Because that mostly came from her memoir. Because that was her memoir and that that she was actually she wasn't born in Cuba. She wasn't born to a wealthy family. Mm -hmm. She was actually just like a poor uh, sex worker who was also a thief and a con artist and published she would like lie and tell people that she came from a more upstanding family because it made her seem better. Um, and that the memoirs were really just a way to make money. Um, and that she like, the only thing we know about her is that she died in 1923. Um, Mm -hmm. and like, don't know when she was born or where she was born and what her birth name was. And she had all these aliases, um, but that she like never was a soldier. But so in his, um, uh, in like his telling of it, 
she wasn't a soldier because like there he claims that there were no women who fought in the civil war but we know for a fact that there were when did he he wrote this like a long time ago no this is like 2016 what but we know that there were right maybe it was 2006 but it's like like there are for sure like there are this is just a guy who's like no kind of i mean it's like documented that there were women who right, fought. So how could he claim that? Right. So it's like, well, maybe he's wrong about that part, but not the rest. Like he could still be mm-hmm. right about parts of it. Um, but like some of her stories like are corroborated by, um, by like other documents and um, things that we know at the time. Like he sucks. I'm glad you don't remember his name. <laughs> um, it, it's also I'm going to write like, a book that says he's bad at history. Well, you know what it is also? It's like, yeah, I mean, every everything we know from like, you know, from like this time and before is based on like what people wrote about themselves right. and like letters and shit. But I feel like there's like extra, extra scrutiny when it's a woman and it's like a less willingness to believe it. Like I remember learning about like the Aztec invasion, like when the, when the Spanish invaded uh, like Montezuma or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I remember like, I was talking to somebody about it because they were like, yeah, did you know that the Spanish only had like 300 men against their like 16,000 men? And I was like, oh, who wrote that? And they're like, the Spanish. And I was like, yeah, of course, they want it to seem like there were only 300 men because it makes it seem like so much more amazing. Right. But it's like, that doesn't get... History written by the victor. Yes. And like, women have never been the victor. (laughs) Yeah. I like that you went with the positive way of saying that. And I went with the negative. (laughs) Um, But so, yeah. So it's like... I don't know. I get like you have to take everything with a grain of salt when it comes to history, especially if it's just like it's only a first person narrative. Totally. But But it sounds like there are corroborating things for her. At least for like her understanding also of like culture and stuff that like in the in the art, like in the in battle and Mm -hmm. stuff is like like that would be very hard to fabricate. Yeah. So there's some truth. To so something. there's for sure some truth to it, but he claims that she was just like right, this well, like con artist. Like um, I sucks. And that is the story of Loretta Janetta Velasquez. Loretta Janetta. That does sound like a I fake know. name, though. I know. It does. <laughs> I mean, all of her names sound fake. That's <laughs> like, amazing. Um, and my sources were history.net. Um, oh, William C. Davis is his name. He, it's. Uh, I think and shaming woman it's his game yeah um I think this article it's an excerpt from his book but it's it's in the Civil War Times magazine which I mean I'm also like I'm questioning if anybody who's like obsessed with the Civil War yeah, <laughs> it's like I know. Well, it's a weird um, hobby but this article is called Confederate Con Artist which I don't love um <laughs> civilwar.org uh Sorry, I didn't write any of this stuff. And CivilWarSaga.com. And then there's a documentary about her called Rebel, which I didn't watch because I don't have data like that to just, like, watch that <laughs> on Wi-Fi, you know? There was no Wi-Fi at the club? Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. It's a casino, baby. They don't want you on your oh, phone. Oh, that's true. That's true. They that's want you to not comics. know what time of day it is. Yeah. And they want you to spend, spend, engage. Spend. That was a great one. Thanks. So L- thanks. Loretta. Thanks, Lania. Janetta. Velasquez. So this week is St. Patrick's Day. Mm-hmm. If you didn't know, Chucky's birthday. Oh, it is March seventeenth. And all female reboot at the Tank I know. Theater. <laughs> what a what a day that's gonna be. I know. I think I might show up drunk because <laughs> <laughs> I will be probably hanging out with my dad the whole day. Um, well, that's perfect if we do the Casablanca sketch. Yeah. Although it's '90s, so I don't think we will be doing that. Mm. Did you write any pitches? I have two pitches. I have nothing. That I emailed <laughs> and haven't like heard anything. I mean, this this was not a great uh, week for my yeah. writing. Yeah. But I do have two pitches, one for Urkel and one for Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Cool. Cool. All right. Well, I'll talk I'll about I'll tell you that after. later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so it is St. Patrick's Day. And so uh, in honor of that, if you don't know, I am half Irish, an Irish citizen, my dad is deeply obsessed with anything that has to do with Ireland, so I thought I would I would touch down on my heritage and do an Irish woman. Um, her name is Grace O'Malley or Grania Nimalia in Ooh. Irish. Yeah, 
Um, I don't know if I said that right. I hope I did. Um, also, she has a nickname, Granuel, which is so, this is so crazy because there's, okay, this is for no one but my mom and my brother, I guess. But there's this Irish band that my dad listened to when we were growing up like every day called the Saw Doctors. And they are like a, now they're very old, but they're just like a, kind of like a Now they're the scene rock. doctors. They are the scene doctors. That is true. Um, <laughs> ah, it's very true. They are old as hell now, but um, they are this like there's like four like white Irish dudes, obviously white Irish, um, and they like would they play like poppy rock music that's like all about Ireland, and they're from the town that my grandpa is from. Hmm. And my dad just loves them, and they sing about like the beauty of Ireland, and they have one song that has a line that's like. Uh, Oh, take me to Clare Island, the home of Granuel. And I never knew what that Ooh. meant until this. And it's, it's about Grace O'Malley. Okay. So Grace O'Malley is was born in 1530 to um, a chieftain Ooh, of the O'Malley clan. Yeah, way, way back. So this is basically like, basically for context, um, the six, during the 16th century is when the British kind of started to really take hold of Ireland because um, they... I'm pretty sure it was Henry VIII was was the king when when she was born and he I think was the first to be like Ireland is ours <laughs> or whatever mm-hmm. and there was all it was just like a bunch of warring clans at the time in Ireland so it was like it was very spread out and they and and the British used the um the infighting between the clans to pit them against each other and then oh. eventually take hold like here yeah like here exactly divide and conquer bullshit um, that they did everywhere so that's basically what's happening and it's like it pr- pretty much like all like that really mm-hmm. amplifies during her lifetime so she was born in 1530 as i said to a chieftain of the o'malley clan um the o'malley's rose to power during the 1300s and they ruled um basically the nor- this like northwest part of ireland called county mayo they like ruled that area um, for over 300 years, and they were they were like sea people, so they were like pirate mm. pirate people. Ooh, sorry, that's okay. Um, and so they would like, you know, if ships would go by the bay, they would be like, "You have to pay us money," and mm. they'd be like, "No, we don't." And if they said no, they would be like, "Okay, well, we're gonna pillage you then." Yeah, sort um, of like pirate meets <laughs> troll. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Um, Pirate meets troll vibes, and they were just like powerful, whatever. So they had a long history of seamanship, and so growing up, (laughs) I know, come shit, baby. (laughs) This is now Come Town, the podcast. (laughs) <laughs> the um, all-female reboot of come town <laughs> it's just to talking about women's history and way less people listen um <laughs> did i tell you i think i said this uh but my mom like on the bottom of our oh yeah it says like uh, like other podcasts that people listen to and my mom was like what's come town because she loves nick mullen Aww. like she because i drove down to new yeah. like she's met him and she just like she's like i want to listen she sh- i mean my mom's a social worker and so like whenever somebody seems troubled <laughs> She's just like drawn it's to like, them. You need help. And she wants to just like infiltrate herself in their oh lives God. in the sweetest way. No, 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 of course. And so she's always she could she, use it. I'm she sure. always wants to know how how uh I mean I those are the three guys who I went down with, but she always asked me about Rojo, Scotland, and the Mullen. Ni- and, Nick. and she's like, Is that Ma- is that Nick's podcast? But I like it. Oh, I like, no. You would not you would not No. Do not listen. <laughs> but he's doing you great. Tell from the name. <laughs> um it's very funny, but probably not. Probably not for moms. Probably not a big mom no. demographic, I would guess. I don't know, though. I'm also know. guessing that a lot of our listeners would not enjoy it. No. I mean, there's probably you, an intersection. There's a, yes, totally. But definitely not moms. No. <laughs> anyway, so so chances are good that Grace was taught from a young age about seafaring and that she was like very familiar with the seas around her um, her home like from early childhood. Uh, they had a stronghold on Clare Island, which is this like very beautiful little island in Clue Bay, which is again in County Mayo. It's like in a bay, an island within a bay. Um, growing up, it's very likely that she was well educated. Like they don't know a ton about like her early life, but um, later on, it's clear that she knows Latin, which I'll get to. Um, but she definitely she so she probably spoke like Latin fluently, Irish fluently, and then 
probably like could get was passable in a bunch of other like European languages. When you say Irish, do you mean is that Gaelic? Gaelic, Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Can Um, you say is Irish another word for it? Like, can you? Yeah, you would in Ireland. You would say they speak Irish. Yeah, yeah. Um, Because I I feel like if you said like. People like in Mexico, they spoke. If Mexican? you said like they spoke Mexican, you'd be like, "No, no, no, uh, <laughs> that's wrong." <laughs> red flag. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, I mean, I guess maybe because Spanish is from Spain, right? Irish is really only from okay. Ireland, Ireland. Yeah. Right. Um. Anyway, so she, yeah, so she like grew up and kind of took over and became like head of of the clan, and she would. She had like a long, a long, uh, not the clan, her clan, her clan, <laughs> head of the KKK. This takes a weird story. This is actually about the origins of the KKK. No, of, of um, the O'Malley clan. And uh, she would attack ships that passed by the mouth of the bay and force them to pay a fine. Again, if they refused, she would cool. plunder them. Um, she had a long, long history of sort of piracy behavior. Um, she marries her first husband, who's a local clan, an- another, another clan uh-huh. strong man, <laughs> Donald O'Flaherty. They're married in 1546. And apparently what's really interesting is in this like multi, I keep saying clan now. No, but I'm talking about yeah, I- yeah, yeah. Irish clans. Um, in this like multi clan system in Ireland in the 16th century, uh, women were able to keep any property that they brought into the marriage oh. if the marriage ended. Um, and they were allowed to acquire more while married. Wow. That's yeah, progressive. Very progressive. I think they weren't entitled to their husband's property though like for instance so she so he, this guy her first husband dies in battle in the early 1560s <clears throat> and there's this, there's a lot of like crazy stories about her this one is that his killers tried to plunder his castle and so she stripped the, the lead roof off of the castle melted it and poured it onto <gasps> their heads as they left <laughs> yeah Shit. she's a, she's a fucking badass um so she, even though her husband died she gets rid of the his killers who are trying to like plunder and all the all the men all of his men were, or most of his men were very loyal to her. So most of them moved from his castle where she was living back, back to her castle on clear Island. Cause mm-hmm. she couldn't, she, she wasn't supposed to stay there. Right. Um, uh, and then there's a story like apparently right after the first marriage, she started dating this guy, um, who was also killed in battle. And so she, uh, re- uh, like avenged his death by killing his attackers very brutally yes. at their own castle, which was the castle of Duna. So she got the nickname Dark More Lady like of Castle Duna. of Duma. Duma, baby. You're Duma. <laughs> yeah, don't get don't get on Grace's. Don't kill Grace's lover. Basically, is yeah. you will you will suffer. Um, so in 1567, she has her second marriage, and this marriage was like it seems like it was just kind of for convenience. There's all these weird stories about them. Like after a year of marriage, like. Uh, she just like locked him out of the castle or something. I don't know. They were like troubled, but it seems like they reconciled and they kind of were married. But it was, I guess the marriage was, it was, it seemed like very business oriented Mm. and like they didn't really, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Um, So it's around the 1560s when like there's a lot of complaints to British people about her pirate like behavior. (laughs) Um, Ugh, what yeah. a tattletale. I know. People are like, wait, you can't do this anymore. Um, oh, there's here's another fun story about her. On a trip to Dublin once, she stopped by a castle. And I guess as like the different clan leaders, it was like um, socially normal for if someone stopped by your castle that you would... Um, open your door to another clan leader and like treat them to dinner and let them stay there that was just like typical like a fraternity yeah so it was like that was like the the rule but she stopped at this one castle and the guy uh the gates were closed and she's and they like refused to let her in so because she she was a lady no i think they were just like we we're already sitting down for dinner you can't come in (laughs) um (laughs) and she was like so she abducted the dude's grandson ah okay (laughs) all right we're (laughs) skipping a few steps there and so as punishment for like their like it was like emily post extreme um she was like this is impolite i'm gonna abduct (laughs) a grandson (laughs) and then she released him on the agreement that they always keep their gates open for unexpected visitors and seat an extra plate at meals i mean she got what she wanted um yeah she was real real wild um there's another crazy story in in 1567 her son which one thing said it was her third kid of four kids and one thing said it was her last child so i'm not sure but her son um was born on a return a return voyage from a trading mission like on the boat he was just born mm-hmm. and then they get attacked by turkish pirates 
And uh, there's a story that she just like fired a gun and was like, and said, quote, take this load from unconsecrated hands. Oh, <laughs> like unholy okay. hands, I guess. I mean, She's hey, like a you don't mess with a, with a mama bear, you no, know? No, you don't. Um, and then there's also like her, once like her son was like disappointing her in battle and she screamed at him, are you trying to hide in my arse the place you came out of? <laughs> like, See, <laughs> they, they come out of our butts. <laughs> they do. She knew exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Um, That's so crazy. So yeah, she's just That's like something- a badass crazy yeah. wild woman at least we have it like on record what that kid can talk about in therapy yeah <laughs> I, know. I think her kids probably needed a ton of therapy oh, um, she was a she was a, a very feisty irish lady um so there's it so then again so there's all she's just like living her life battling different people uh-huh. like getting spanish and 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 british shit all these kind of ships that go by getting their money just living her life and in like the 1570s there's um even though she's like fiercely anti-british for most of her life because the because of the way that the british like i said played the different groups and clans against each other there was a time when she offered british the british her support mm a little bit in you know in in against a different clan whatever in 1584 there's this harsh new governor appointed to her region um that's a british governor yes a british governor named sir richard bingham (laughs) sir richard bingham and they just have like they're like basically like a large chunk of her life then just becomes like war with this guy like basically he like he is no holds barred like hates the people there is not Mm -hmm. like just takes everything so like he uh takes all of her cattle and ships basically like leaves her like with like no no way to like live basically um and then uh at one in 1586 he like arrests and almost kills her but her son like stops him and then at some point (laughs) he's like like, disappointing now mom (laughs) exactly (laughs) at some point he steps he like arrests one or both of her sons i saw different Mm -hmm. things in different sources but he arrests at least one of her sons and she's like all right fuck this this guy sucks i'm gonna go above his head i'm gonna speak directly to the queen of england (laughs) so she writes queen elizabeth the first asking for relief and to maybe like work with her Mm -hmm. and like you know goes over his head and she responds with like 18 questions that determine like to ask about her family background her connection how she makes a living whatever Mm -hmm. and so a lot of her a lot of her answers so it's kind of interesting because her like the life of grace o'malley exists in these two very different worlds one is like songs and folklore and poems that like existed through irish culture and heritage and Mm -hmm. like passed down through generations orally in that way and then also these like official uh british government documents that when because any correspondence with the queen was like archived yeah exactly well archived and like officially laminated documented (laughs) yeah so it's like kind of cool because she kind of has these like there's these like two sources of information about her yeah so a lot of the answers to these 18 questions about who she is is like a lot of her life and so similarly to Loretta it's like there's some grain of salt with it because her intention with writing to the queen is to be to be to seem like a sympathetic mm-hmm. character and all this so like you know they do tell her life story but it's definitely a version of right. it she definitely like plays the victim a lot more than she might have if she was just telling someone else totally the story um it's crazy that the queen responded yeah it is really cool yeah so she kind of like like defines her piracy as like a necessity and like how unjust Bingham is. Right. It's like, well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe it could be, I guess that's just like their way of, their way of life at the time. I don't know. Um, yeah. It's not like the British didn't have like, you know, their own pirates and shit. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. She it was just it. like a weird time. Yeah. So her son, okay. So basically, Oh wait, I guess maybe she wrote that thing first and then her son got arrested, whatever, but her son gets arrested and that prompts her to be like, fuck this. I'm going to just go to London. So she travels to London to speak with the queen and and that's how we know that she speaks Latin because her and the queen corresponded mm. in Latin because the queen doesn't speak Irish and she didn't speak right. en- enough English. So that was, that's pretty cool. They like spoke in a dead gotta language. Find that, yeah. <laughs> gotta find that um, was it dead at that time? Um, probably not Latin yet. Died. Yeah, probably not. I mean, the, yeah, probably not yet, but it was like on its way out. I bet. I mean, how long did it really last? I don't know. Um, mm-hmm. Anyway, so she uh they speak in september of 1593 at greenwich castle uh the queen meets the pirate queen and (laughs) apparently uh grace refused to bow 
because she's like, I'm a queen too, Ooh. and you are, I'm not under British rule. <laughs> so she refused mm-hmm. to bow. But they kind of, it seems that they kind of had like a mutual respect for each other. Yeah. There's also this kind of funny story of where like, Grace blew her no- nose into a handkerchief and then threw it in the fire and that was like very scandalous and she explained that in Ireland they don't carry around dirty shit and I guess in England that you, you would never do that I don't know it was like a whole like thing anyway <laughs> I don't know that's a fun little tidbit um, so I guess there was some kind of mutual respect for her and the queen agreed to grant Grace all of her requests basically freeing her son and like to have some leniency if she stopped any rebellious activities against the crown so basically mm. just like okay only attack the Spanish ships or whatever right. <laughs> just don't attack ours fuck with the Turks all you want yeah but not but. us um, so her son is freed but that Bingham guy kind of just doesn't give a fuck and like keeps terrorizing her um, and so she sent two more petitions to the queen in April and May of 1595. It's two years later after she met her, but she doesn't get any response this time. Mm-hmm. It's during this time that there's a large uprising by another Irish clan. So that's probably where the queen's attention was in yeah. terms of Ireland. And that uprising actually really hurt Grace and County Mayo because there was just like a lot of damage that happened. So it was kind of a tough time. Yeah. I just um, keep picturing land covered in mayonnaise. Every time you say County Mayo. I know. It is. Um, well, they do love mayonnaise there. I will do not they? lie. Is in that Ireland? Oh, yeah. Most of the salads are just like some form of mayo-based mm. thing. You get, you order Ugh. a salad and it's just like, no. They're like, we like when things are as white as we are. <laughs> it's truly, <laughs> truly the whitest. You do not go there for the food, really. But mm. um, I'm sure there's like hip food in the cities now. But like traditional Irish food is like weird. I mean, corned beef and cabbage is good. Yeah. But it's like, the, how often can you the have only, it? Really? The and only the brown time bread is I've liked Irish food was at 12 Mile Limit when they Mm. did it for St. Patrick's Day and then at Finn McCool's. Yeah. Those were the only The other thing I will say about Irish, like one amazing food in Ireland is all of their dairy. Like there's something about the the dairy there that is, Mm. it just tastes different than any dairy here. And so like the butter, the ice cream, the the, the milk chocolate Mm -hmm. and the brown bread, which I guess is made with whatever it's brown bread it's this type of bread that they make in ireland and again it's like it just tastes different when you have it here it's just way better there it's just this brown it's like this it's this very kind of thick brown bread and you eat it with butter in the morning and it's just like Mm. fucking crazy good (laughs) so like everything that you it's like the the good things whenever i go to ireland i always gain like 10 pounds because all i eat there is like dairy and bread (laughs) and it's awesome but like it's not healthy (laughs) um but anyway it's very yeah it's very like mayo based (laughs) mayo based lifestyle um but i don't think that's why they call it county mayo Mayo. based lifestyle (laughs) oh real potato potato culture um anyway so uh where was i oh yeah so so it's kind of a tough time but eventually she's able to get her fleet back out to sea and she like once she gets old she can't really like sail away um she dies come sail away come sail away with grace okay um (laughs) that's all we can sing before we have to pay somebody Uh, oh i know (laughs) we should be careful (laughs) Eh, it's fine (laughs) um so she dies sometime in 1603 of natural causes at the age of 72 or 73 so she lives a long life and she dies the same year as queen elizabeth and i think they were around the same age they were kind of like parallel like weirdly Mm -hmm. parallel figures i guess in that way um yeah, so that's there's that's that's pretty much Grace O'Malley. There's a bronze statue and an exhibit about her life in at the Westport House in County Mayo. And in mm-hmm. 2003, historian Ann Chambers wrote a book about her, and that kind of reignited interest in her in the past mm-hmm. like 10 or 15 years. So um, apparently, there was like a movie deal like to get her life uh, into a movie, but I don't know where I don't know where that went. Um, yeah, so that's the Pirate Queen of Ireland, Grace O'Malley. Ugh, um, my sources were the National Archives blog, a, uh, an article by Benjamin Trowbridge, um, the Rejected Princesses book, uh, the uh, an Irish Post article by Aidan Long- Lonergan, and HistoryIreland.com. Great. Grace O'Malley, happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, do you have a, one, a Wonder I do. Woman? Yeah. Oh, wait. Where's my notebook? I was going to say that my Wonder Woman is the New York Times. Oh, Because yeah. they did that cool thing this week where they... I mean, it's crazy that they didn't have it before, but they're, they're doing like overlooked obituaries. So they released 15 
this week but I think they're going to just kind of keep doing them and it's basically just like women who because like the number of, of formal obituaries written in the Times is overwhelmingly white and male uh-huh. the statistically are overwhelmingly white and male and so they've decided to do like post homu post post-deathly um they're doing um, posthumously posthumously it's that's con- confusing. It's said different from how it looks. Posthumously. Yeah, yeah. Posthumously. Posthumously, they're doing, um, a, they, they released like 15 obituaries of, of very important women, some of whom we'd covered on this show. Yeah. Ada Lovelace. Who else was in there that we had done? Um, someone else. But some, then there are some crazy so, ones that are like, fa- like Sylvia Plath. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, how did you guys not have... What? Like, she's famous. Like, what are you doing? Like, like the thing people know about Sylvia Plath is, is how she, she died. died. <laughs> like maybe it was like too scandalous to talk about or something i don't know it's, it's like crazy. i don't know you had hemingway yeah that's and he true. fucking blew his brains, brains out. out yeah no it's 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 truly nuts um that one was like so shocking but then there's a lot of really cool ones in there so that's that's i guess my wonder woman is the new york times <laughs> right wait was it hemingway who that. shot himself or did he drink I himself don't remember to i always get him I went and, to his house in uh, cuba did you? Mm-hmm. I never made it to his house. It was cool. I went to Cuba. I, 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 like, you can't go inside, but you just look from the outside. Yeah. Well, there's like a thing. It's, it's cool. the Monteleon in New Orleans because he like wrote there, I guess. Yeah. Um, but I always get him and uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald mixed up on how they died. I'm pretty sure. Because one of them Hemingway shot himself shot and one of them so drank himself. I'm death. pretty. I, I feel like Ernest Hemingway would, is more of a shot himself kind of guy than F. Scott Fitzgerald. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know. Ernest Hemingway was like. A mess. He had a huge mess. His, well, but he also had PTSD from the war. I think he also just had like machismo issues. He in his bathroom. This is like the weirdest part of his house is you can like you look from the outside, but you can pretty much see because it's just one level house and you can see everything when you look through the windows. But in his bathroom, he wrote his weight on the wall every single day. I get that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. What a crazy guy. I mean, it sounds like he just had an eating disorder. Yeah. Um, but I think he also, I don't know if he, he was, was also just like obsessed with like man stuff. Yeah. I was like, look, shut I, the fuck up. Hemingway is one of those, um, <sighs> figures where you're like, oh wow, our culture really loves the way that men write. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, cause I, I recently tried to read the sun also rises and you were like, this is bad. And I, I mean, I was just like, what's the point of this? And I think I like texted my dad, like, is this worth reading? And he said, yes. But then I stopped. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reading, oh. um, in cold blood right now. Oh, so is Louis. Really? Yeah. Oh. Um, that's I, so funny. Louis is reading really it too. Fun. And Louis said he really likes it. I do too. So far. No, I'm, I have I've, to read I'm it barely next. into it, but it's uh, like, he is too. You, guys are pro- you guys should have a book club. Oh, um, also this is, is funny my the kid <laughs> the kid that I babysit Louis was like I was showing him pictures of the baby the like almost two-year-old that I babysit and Louis was like he looks like Truman Capote <laughs> <laughs> and I was like what Truman Capote looks vision, like a lot of babies yeah exactly my only vision of Truman Capote was Philip Seymour Hoffman yeah, and I was too. like no he doesn't and then I looked at pictures of a young Truman Capote and I was like oh wow he uh, I'll show you pictures <laughs> afterwards okay. and then I told the mom of the baby and he she was like now I can't I can never look at him <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm sorry. I was like, you should dress him up That's as Truman Capote so, for Halloween. Oh my god, <laughs> so cute. Um, anyway, um, okay. okay, my Wonder Woman. And if you're if if you're a first time listener, um, we try to uh, every week like highlight a woman who's making history right now, so that we don't repeat the mistakes of our. Wait, you're right. Th- Actually, I think Hemingway drank himself to death. Drank himself to death. Did F. Scott Fitzgerald kill himself? Okay. Anyway, sorry. Okay. Um. So my Wonder Woman is this woman named Barbara Clark who is a former inmate uh, at the New Jersey in from like New Jersey prison. And she um, is uh, leading the charge on a lawsuit with other inmates um, against a bunch of guards and like the, I guess like the prison itself, like the system for sexual harassment and sexual abuse. And it's stuff that like they tried to, lodge complaints about when they were inmates and like it just nobody paid attention like nobody cared nobody did anything um and so she and like you know that's like a scary thing you can like face retribution retaliation you have like no power and no agency when you're an inmate and so she um she along with like a bunch of other women are like bringing it to court and that's you know it's like 
this there are all these that's cool all these like me too things that happen that are not in the public eye in the way that like hollywood was or the way that comedy can be um and it's like yeah this this whole like i remember reading a thing about how after cosby's trial like the after all these women came forth about cosby um reports of rape went up a lot because oh well because the reports yeah yeah not the actual incidents but reports because people Mm. were like oh this is in the public eye if if these women can go after somebody famous then like i can tell i can report the person who assaulted me you know what i mean like if they're willing to take down this powerful man i can take I, i can whatever um and so this you know it's just like it's a cool ripple effect that's happening because this yeah. stuff has ha- always happened. And it's nice that, the, like, you know, somebody who for so long had no agency is suddenly me- getting their voice. Yeah. Heard. That's and amazing. I don't think it's sudden, but, but yeah. So that's Barbara yeah. Clark. That's amazing. I heard um, about her. Also, I was entirely wrong, actually. I wrist re- So Hemingway did shoot himself. He did. And F. Scott Fitzgerald, Fitzgerald, Scott Fitzgerald Kennedy drank himself to death. Drank him. Okay. So you were right yes. the first time. That does seem like the right way. I think F. Scott Fitzgerald seems a little more like dainty. I don't know that he would like have mm. the, And mm-hmm. Ernest Hemingway is like, I'm a man. Yes. I'm going to use lot. a gun mm-hmm. in my head. It's a lot of proving that you're a man. Yeah. Um, Please email us at wellbehavedpod at gmail.com if you you know just want to join in the conversation or <laughs> about men who killed themselves tell us <laughs> that's our next podcast is just men who killed men who killed themselves and <laughs> hey, we celebrate that choice no, no, <laughs> I'm just no. kidding, I'm just kidding. it's that uh, toxic masculinity hurts the men it too. does it hurts women and men it does um you can follow us on twitter at well behaved pod and join the facebook page well behaved podcast i yeah. think are just well behaved um please rate oh, review, yeah. and rate, subscribe review and because subscribe. for some reason that makes a difference i know it shouldn't it's dumb Honestly, but thank like, you so please do it it's so easy just hit subscribe and just write a little five stars and say good job or whatever something yeah. easy and easy and peasy and um tell a friend you yeah. know tell your mom i know tell your, your daughter. moms loved us let moms love us i'm telling you not just ours not but just moms ours. everywhere. Moms everywhere. Um, do you have any dates for the future? Oh yeah, this Sorry. week is, um, we, we're, I'm, I'm like, all over the place. I'm like well booked this week. Um, Tuesday, you and I are both on the <clears throat> One Liner Madness show. Yeah, baby. Tuesday the 13th at 8 p.m. Littlefield. You can catch Ariel and I. Um, on Wednesday, I'm doing Too Many Cooks at Lucky Jack's at 9 o'clock, Wednesday the 14th. And uh, I'm doing a show at Legion at 7.30 on the 15th. And then we have All Female Reboot on the 17th mm-hmm. at 9.30. Um, mm. Do you have anything next week that you want to read off to? I feel like we can do like two. Because some people you listen do. to this a little late. You know, um, I'm doing on the 22nd, Thursday the 22nd, I'm doing comedy at, at Artichoke Pizza in uh, yes. um, Bushwick at 8 o'clock. Uh, do you like artichoke pizza? I do, yeah. Okay. People are really on board or I not. I mean, it's like, it's like gross and like weird. Oh, yeah. You feel but terrible last time, I, last time I did this show, you get a free slice of pizza. And last time I did this show, I did, I went with like a different type of pizza. And I'm like, I'm going to do mm, the artichoke slice. Stick with the artichoke. I'm going to do the artichoke. I mean, it's good. There are other pizza is good too, but then you feel like I, I never buy that. So I'm like, I'm just going to get it because it's like the one time mm-hmm. I'm actually going to do it, you know? Anyway. Um, okay, Wednesday, March 14th, I will be at Pet Shop in Jersey City at 8 o'clock. Uh, Thursday... Is that a bar show? Uh, I believe show. So, I oh. believe show. Show, <laughs> show, 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 show. Um, Interesting. I don't think that there are any Oh, also, I wanted to there. tell you that you're... Um, I'll tell you this off. You're, oh. I don't think your dates are on your website. Do you know that? No, they're not. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how to... Well, because I don't know how to create a separate calendar for comedy... Like, I just have my one calendar Did with everything. Did she use Wix to make it? I have no idea what Jen used. I'll show Okay. And I'm I'll afraid to you. ask her. No, I mean, I'm not afraid to ask her. I just don't want to bother her because she's recovering from a concussion. Yeah. And I don't want to make her If you can get into it and it's Wix, it's very easy. I'll show you how to do oh, it. Oh, what? Like, oh, no, it's Squarespace. Oh, I'm sure there's a way on Squarespace, too. I'm sure there is. Yeah, I just, like, easy. don't. And no. you, I just put it on my calendar and I like save it to a different like mm. calendar. And then it just goes there automatically. Okay. Maybe I'll have you show me. It's easy. Yeah. Okay. Um... March 15th, uh, Thursday at 8.30, I'll be at the Pit Underground. Cool. Um, All-female reboot on the 17th, St. Patrick's Day. Do something good for yourself at the Tank Theater. <laughs> um, Wednesday, March 21st, I'll be at Halyards at 8.30. 
Thursday, March 22nd, I'll be at Good Vibes at 9.30. And Saturday, the 24th, I'll be at the Creek in the Cave at 10 o'clock. My brother might be there. Who oh, knows? Yeah. Hot but come, sighting. Come meet another Adam Elias. Elias. <laughs> All right. Well, that's been it. Thank that's you it. so much. And keep, keep making, making history. history.